A shocking turn of events in Corntown, Ontario, as podcasters Stephen T. Holmes and Matthew Minor have been arrested for murder. The pair are charged with the murder of Bigfoot hunter Cleon Thunderbump Jr. and park ranger Joe Meeks. More charges may be pending. From town heroes to town horrors. Some called them saviors, but have they been terrorizing the town this whole Leaving time? citizens to wonder if Holmes and Minor are responsible for the strange attacks plaguing the town for months now. Further charges may be laid against the pair. We have yet to determine conclusively that these amateur podcasters were in fact the masterminds behind the attacks. But it seems increasingly like The duo were the last to see both victims alive. Did they leave Thunderbump Jr. to his death that day? It's hard to believe, but also not hard to believe at all. The tall one kept informing me that I had something on my shirt, and when I would look down to confirm, he would flick my nose with his finger. Simply diabolical. The pair are being held in the Corntown jail as they wait arraignment and trial. If there's one thing Corntown's famous for is that they get her done. Greetings and salutations, listener. I'm Gregory Haversham. And I'm Dr. Mortimer Morg. And this is Corntown, an investigative journalism radio program brought to you by the SM Boys. This is usually the thing where Steve and the hunky guy introduce the show. <laughs> However, at this moment, those two knuckleheads are in the slammer, so they asked us to grab their equipment and cover for them. Uh, they didn't explicitly state that they would like us to record an intro, but we thought we'd take the liberty while they're preoccupied with claiming their innocence. Hey, maybe they'll like what they hear so much they'll give us our own show. Oh, what a dream. Okay, what about this? We go on a road trip to a different museum in every state, and talk about the art and the use of color and texture, and what the art means, and talk about how, like, pretty it is, and we call it State of the Art. State of the Art? Are you serious? Discussing and focusing on something so visual in an auditory medium? That is so fucking brilliant. Shut the front door and sign me up. Hey, hey should we be doing, like, impressions of Steve and Matt, like, for the intro? Ooh, mimicry. Sounds like the role of a lifetime. <clears throat> Let's try it out. Um, okay. Uh, ha! Ha! And I'm working. I'm Stephen. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. I'm Stephen Holmes. I'm Stephen Holmes. Aha! Oh, oh hey, okay. Uh, I'm Matt. <clears throat> oh, come on. I'm Matthew Minor. <clears throat> I want to know what dead bodies taste like. This is Matthew Minor. Very good. When last you saw Stephen and Matthew, or I, I mean, us, we ran into some trouble while investigating the Corntown Maze Institute. We tracked down Stephen and Matt, ship ourselves at the jail. We tracked, we are in jail. Things look bleak for them, uh, us. We headed down to the old Hoosgow ourselves, and along the way asked Corntownians if they thought Matthew and Stephen, uh, us, could be killers. Yeah, I met them once. Do I believe they're capable of murder? I mean, I've seen what they can do with a can of cream corn. Unprompted, too. No one begged them to do it. So yeah, I believe they're cold-blooded killers. There's no way they could be guilty of murder. Manslaughter? Sure. And I could see them making some accidents here and there. Or taking care of mistakes. But murder? Come on. Maybe third degree. Second, if they were provoked. And they are easily provoked. Murder? <laughs> no way, muchachos. The only thing those groovy dudes could say is a bongo solo. <laughs> I witnessed that firsthand. Though I did have a few licks of my toad rob at that drum circle. And I am known to hallucinate when I'm licking toads. <laughs> oh man. 
What if they were banging on no bongos and were bongoing some dude's head to death? You guys aren't narcs, are you? Wait, come on. This is crazy. We shouldn't be on trial. Yeah, we found evidence that points to the real killer. Let us submit it. How convenient. You just happened to find evidence that proves your innocence. Yes. Sure. Anyway, it's too late. You can't submit new evidence now. This town gets her done. Look, there's no way we killed that guy. It has to be Dr. Pupsenfreud. It was his lab where this apparently dead guy was found. And I found you two with them, covered in their blood. Um, okay, but we didn't know they were dead. We thought the blood was old jam. No one is that stupid. Oh yeah? Watch this. Hey Matt, what's 2 plus 2? A math equation. Checkmate. We'll be on our way now, Mr. Nutches. I'm sure you have some pants to piss. Even if you did somehow stumble across this body by accident, there's still two others you're responsible for. You were the last one seen with both Cleon Thunderbump Jr. and Ranger Meef. Yeah, but Joe Meef is just missing. And Cleon was killed by whoever is behind these attacks. Probably Dr. Pupsenfreud. Right, right. Dr. Pupsenfreud. Who is also missing. Isn't that convenient? He just happens to disappear. And you two blame the whole thing on him. Where'd you hide his body? Nowhere. We didn't kill the doc. We didn't kill anybody. We were with Cleon that night when Joe Meat disappeared. And Cleon ended up dead. Okay, okay, but because we weren't with him the entire night. That's right. You had plenty of time to kill both Cleon and Joe Meef. The only things we killed that night was a six-pack of Grape Crush and a game of Bobo Jr. And you two spent the entire night together? Well, not the entire night. I mean, we can't go to the bathroom together. <laughs> I tried it, but he just goes so much. I have IBS, and I'm addicted to donkey milk. And did Matt ever leave your site? Well, he left once because he couldn't remember if he left the oven on. The oven? I thought Pups and Freud cooked all your food. I like pushing buns. What, a guy can't press buns and groove on their beeps? Or is that against the law, Mr. Zookeeper? I just find it interesting that you both were on your own that night for a while. Oh, okay. I see what you're trying to do. Look, bud. Boyd. Whatever. Me and Matt here, we're besties. Ride or die, cherish or perish, slackline or flatline. We're homeboys. We have matching tattoos. We've each got a necklace with half a pendant that when you put them together forms a heart shape like Jay Leno's head. I named my pet hedgehog after him. Stevie Pricks. What? That sounds more like it's named after Stevie Nicks. Well, you're wrong. Right, Matt? Uh... Right, Matt? It's an homage to both of you. Oh. Okay. Well, okay, no. You know what? That's fine. Nothing ever came between Fleetwood Mac. What about the fact that Matt dinged up your Toyota Corolla? Eh, accidents happen. I'm more upset about that. Those smooth curves and state-of-the-art style. Such a shame. What about the fact that Steve had you neutered? Heh, <laughs> I was out of control. You do not want to get into a baby-making competition with Nick Cannon. Dude's a machine. Huh. I guess I was wrong. You know each other all too well. Oh yeah, you know we love that T-Swift. That's right. You both love Taylor Swift, don't you? Oh, you know it. Yeah. Of course. Out of curiosity, what are your favorite songs by her? Ooh, that's a toughie. Uh, Matt, you go first and I'll think of mine. Oh, uh, we should say them at the same time. You, really loud, and me, quieter and hard to hear. <laughs> Such a goofball. You go first. I'm going to think. I don't want to. Matt, say your favorite song. Um, uh, snake. Snake it up. What? Snake? Snakin. Snake skin off. No, no, shake. Shaken. Sh sh shaken big. Shake it off? That's the one. S snaking off. Um. Doesn't sound like much of a fan if he can't even correctly name his favorite song. Alright, fine. I'm not a fan. I never have been. But on the ride down, on any drive we take, we're blasting Taylor. You're blasting Taylor. You're blasting one song by her, and I never enjoy it. 
I don't know how you don't pick up on that. I guess we maybe don't know everything about each other. We don't have to like the same things. We don't like the same Mountain Dew flavors. I don't like any Mountain Dew flavors. They're all disgusting. What? They're all delicious. You're insane. Slurp down a Baja Blast and you'll change your mind, you dink. The smell of those drinks is noticeably awful. Not as noticeable as your nose job. You bitch. That was to fix a deviated septum. (laughs) Yeah, everyone believes that. Well, you know what? I was the one licking all the frosting off your Pop-Tarts. It wasn't a disgruntled Kellogg's worker. Your lawsuits were frivolous. You fiend. Well, I'm the one who moves your elf on the shelf. It's not real. Dewdrop doesn't work for Santa because Santa already knows you're a bad friend. Oh, yeah, I was the reason you didn't get your deposit back for that apartment. And not because of what I did to your shower drain, but because I told your landlord that you didn't invite him to your birthday party on purpose. You beefy grunny. I bet you really are the killer. Clearly, I don't know the real you. Me? Please. You're probably the killer. Hey, did they find any teeth marks on the bodies? This guy's always wanted to know what people taste like. I knew it. What? Dr. Morg? What the? How long have you been standing there? A few minutes. We were bringing the podcast recording equipment and started to record because this sounds juicy. Stop recording. Shut it down. (laughs) Oh, never mind. There's the goose. It's time for court. Locked up in a strange town. Accused of a crime I didn't commit. No one I can call a friend. And about to miss Christmas. Can this day get any worse? Luckily, Officer Crubble was able to sneak our podcast equipment back to me so I can still record. I admit that things look dire. The courthouse is packed. The citizens of Corntown are eager to see if the one-time saviors of the town are the ones who have been terrorizing them over the last months. Many hope to see justice. Others seek an execution. Others still are just here for entertainment since nothing good is on TV today. What are you doing? I'm painting the scene for the podcast. No, put that mic down. I'm not podcasting with a killer. It's bad publicity. Hey, are you two still recording this little podcast of yours? Well, we are. This is great must-hear content. Your Honor, please make them stop. Actually, we do need a record of this and our little type of girl is out with the tooth, so I'll allow it. Fine. May we get started? After examining the evidence, I believe that this case is cut and dry, Your Honor. I won't waste the court's time. Yes, yes, we might as well get this over with. I get my granny waxed at three and have a Christmas goose to stuff at four. How did the defendants plead? Uh, we didn't get a lawyer, Your Honor. It's okay. I say we didn't need one. Uh, well, that was stupid. Steve, how many times have I watched Legally Blonde? At least once. Bingo. How do you plead? Uh, um... I I guess, uh, not guilty, Your Honor. Okay, are you guys still recording? We are. All right, then. The record will reflect that. Mr. Nutches, you may plead your case. Thank you, Your Honor. Now then, if I may, Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of this esteemed jury, when I first met the accused, I believed them to be common buffoons, nincompoops, a pair of dum-dums. Objection. On what grounds? It hurt my feelings. Sustained. Tread carefully, Mr. Nudges. My apologies. I was merely coming to the fact that I, like many of the fine folks in this town, have been duped. These two are not the simpletons we believe them to be, but are in fact cold-blooded, devious psychopaths who have been tormenting this town and its residents. Two. Two men have lost their lives. That we know of. Two men who were last seen by the two men sitting before us here today. Park Ranger Joe Meef met with the defendants as noted in this email exchange. Hours later, he was missing and presumed dead. Cleon Thunderbump Jr., noted Bigfoot expert and cream cheese enthusiast, was lured into the woods in hopes of finding a monster, but instead found his brutal demise at the hands of the monsters that sit right here in this court. Perhaps most telling of all, just the other day, in the aftermath of what I now believe to be a staged attack directed at me, these two cretins had the audacity to take a photograph of my urine-soaked trousers. My trousers, which were urine-soaked, not because I suffer from incontinence, but because I feared for my life. 
I have no shame that as I tangled with the fraudulent creature, I let loose my mellow yellow and stained my dockers. But the mockery that I endured at their hands, I will not let go unpunished. See for yourselves. Here's a photograph in question. <gasps> order! Order! Those pants certainly are drenched. This certainly is grievous behavior. Oh man, this looks bad for us. Uh, the doy. Ladies and gentlemen, the crimes committed were heinous, making me soil my khakis, also killing those other guys. What I don't know for sure is if they were acting together or if one manipulated the other, forced to do things that they would not normally, perhaps also disagreeing about certain female musical artists. I am sure we will hear if this is the case momentarily. Your Honor, uh, I'd like to say something. I thought you might. I'll allow it then. Steve, what are you doing? I'm sorry. You've been through quite an ordeal, haven't you, Mr. Holmes? Yes, sir, I have. Uh, This whole town has. This poor town has had horrible things done to it. Horrible things done by a... By one. One horrible man. Steve, please. Matthew Minor, if that is his real name. That man who stands on trial with me. Who has been by my side this entire time. Who I have trusted with my life. He is a lot of things. He's a liar and a cheat. He's a Thundercats LARPer. He eats fish with his bare hands like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And he has poor taste in music. But above all that, this man, this man right here is my best friend. And he's innocent. What? Objection! Overruled. I would also like to say something, Your Honor. This is highly unorthodox, but I'll allow it. This is outrageous! They're guilty! Kill them immediately! Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, myself and Mr. Holmes may be buffoons, but we are not killers. We came to this town to solve a mystery, and that's exactly what we have done. You see, your town has not been terrorized by an animal, or even a monster, or aliens, or ghosts. It has been terrorized by one man, and one man only. We knew you'd prevent us from submitting our own evidence, but luckily, we knew you couldn't help but share that photo of you in your piss pants. That photo shows that I was attacked. I'm the victim! Does it? I will ask you to take a closer look at the photograph in question. Here, in the foreground, myself and my colleague are in fact posing and laughing with Mr. Nutch's pissy pee pants. However, if you look at Mr. Nutch's in the background here, what do you see? A man wearing a jacket and tie and business attire up top, and nothing but tidy whities down below. If you look closer at this fashion mullet, one thing stands out. His tidy whities are pristine. <gasps> there is not a single drop of golden dribble on that crotch, let alone the stain you would expect from the gushing fountain of piss that would take to drench those pants. Which leads to only one conclusion. After we escaped town hall and reached safety, Boy Duchess used the distraction to remove his pants, paused every drop of piss he held in his bladder onto them, and put them back on before exiting and telling us his wild story to make us believe he was attacked. That's not true! I peed in my pants! I peed in them! Mr. Miner, are you and Mr. Holmes suggesting that Boyd Nutjiz is responsible for the attacks and murders of Cleon Thunderbump and Joe Meath? No, Your Honor. Not exactly. Boyd Nutchess did not commit those crimes, because Boyd Nutchess doesn't exist. He never has. The man who stands here with us is Justin Doby. <gasps> oh, oh, you got me. It is I, Justin Doby. How did you know it was me? What gave it away? We were suspicious from the moment we met you. Mostly because you were a jerk. But something else just didn't look right. We thought you just had a weird skin condition, but then it clicked. You were wearing layers of prosthetic makeup. You got the idea after renting Mrs. Doubtfire, a video which you have yet to return. It's true! You owe me 75 bucks! He also stole my creature from the Black Lagoon cardboard standee. You should have used better glue for those prosthetics. Your edges were a mess. Also, one time when you talked to us, you completely forgot to even put on your makeup. Yeah, we were like, who is this guy that sounds like Boyd but looks like if an egg salad sandwich was a person? Eventually, we put two and two together. Plus, 
Boy Nutchess is Justin Doby spelled backwards. Uh, no, it's an anagram. That too. But why would he commit these horrible acts? Because he lost. He was never going to be mayor. Not when a cute widow kitty and a good boy were running. He was humiliated. He had a real plan to make this town something again. To be the person to save Corntown. But the town that had a dog, or a cat, or, one time, a grilled cheese sandwich as mayor for the last 30 years, kept this trend rolling along. He blamed on others, people that he believed cost him the election. He knew he could disappear and no one would bat an eye. Then he purchased a couple of Chewbacca costumes and viciously attacked those who he thought had wronged him. But why kill Joe Meef and Cleon Thunderbump? Because they interfered with the second half of his plan. Joe Meef was sleeping with his wife, sure. But he also worked for him at the parks department as a land surveyor. Joe found something in that park. Something that Justin kept to himself as he shipped Joe off to the middle of nowhere. Something we also found in the park, though we thought it was alien goo. Oil. After we talked to Joe, he was going to head back to town where he'd surely tell everyone about the discovery. So Justin eliminated him. And Cleon Thunderbump Jr., well, he was a thunderbump in the road. He stumbled on Justin that night we were hunting for Bigfoot. The light from the cave, it was Justin using the tunnels that run under the town to move secretly to the park. People weren't seeing ghosts or cable men in their homes. It was him. The lights in the skies weren't aliens, but drones surveying the area. And the strange alien noises were his drilling equipment. Dress up as a monster, whip the town into hysteria, attack the people who wronged you, and at the same time, scare people away from his pot of gold. I thought it was oil. Figure of speech, Your Honor. I'll allow it. If they had voted him mayor, the town would have been set. The money it would have made selling that oil would solve all the problems he promised to fix. But they rejected him. He couldn't claim the oil now. It was under town property. But if he could scare everyone off with vicious attacks, he could siphon off the oil without anyone knowing and make a pretty penny. Wow, you've got it all figured out. Plus, I knew that if I could draw you two back here, I could pit it all on the two podcasters who ruined my life. If you hadn't ran those ads for those damn animals, I would have been a shoo in for mayor. Actually, you're quite behind in the polls. Yeah, you really didn't stand a chance. Yeah, baloney sandwich had you beat by a mile. No matter. You boys are quite a team. I tried my best to discredit you and throw you under the bus, but you managed to figure it all out. Well, almost. I was going to save this town. I loved it more than anyone, but they turned their backs on me. Or some feline who doesn't even understand the intricacies of politics. Perker Pazzi doesn't know how to balance a budget. She doesn't know the first thing about hosting a fundraiser to buy new soccer goal posts. The whole town could have benefited from the riches that would come from that oil. But you were wrong about one thing. You see, I don't want it for myself. I haven't been siphoning it off for my gain. I have been preparing it. There's enough oil under this town to blow it all the smithereens. And that's what I'm going to do. <gasps> What's that? I can't save this town. It's unworthy. So I'm going to wipe it out of the face of the earth. I was going to wait until the big ball drop on New Year's Eve, but looks like the New Year's going to come early this year, and you won't live to see next year. That's very clunky. My words are this makeshift detonator. Both? Justin. Dr. Puffsenfreud. Stay out of this, Retger. We need to end this, Justin. We? Yes. I was aiding him in this endeavor. That's why he bought two Chewbacca costumes. It is... In the beginning, I was just being there for my friend, believing that we would be attending some sort of science fiction convention. However, I soon found myself aiding him in undertakings which were much more horrible. I believed you two would be able to stop him. That is why I reached out to you. But why go through with all of this? Why help him? Matthew, Stephen, that you should both understand better than most. It is because he is my best friend. You do get that. If you're really my friend, you'd let me blow myself, and you, and them, and everyone here to smithereens. I am your friend. I understand the pain that you have been feeling. I too lost something that I love. When my beloved Sheila left me, I too felt as though a hole had been torn into my chest. Every morning when I would wake in a cold bed alone, when I would open my utensil drawer and find a spoon slot emptied, when I would take a hot shower to feel a simple warmth, which would dissipate when I would find words scrawled into the mirror that the steam would reveal, words that said, enjoy being alone, stinky dink. You think that I too did not think of wiring up Sheila with explosives to rid the world of her? 
I admit that I did. But I knew that I would regret it, just as I regret having those thoughts. We cannot change the ways that people think about us. However, we can change our ways and hope that people see us as we truly are. He's right. You see us as you want to see us. In the simplest terms, in the most convenient definitions. But what we found out is that each one of us is a brain. And an athlete. And a basket case. A princess. And a criminal. Does that answer your question? Sincerely yours. The Breakfast Club. Okay. Yes. Uh, give up this plan, Justin. I have extra room around the Christmas corn. There will always be a place there for my friends. Though you will have to sleep on the pillow. I... I... I'm sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry. Karate! Oh, I was turning it off. Sorry, I got amped up on Mountain Dew. Matt, this stuff is delicious. Well, it looks like everything is going to be all right. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. Two people are still dead. Someone has to answer for that. Actually, that's not true, Your Honor. (gasps) Is it? Joe? Hi. Yeah, uh, I'm not dead. Uh, Matt and Steve told me that Dunkaroos are back, and I was really hankering for some snacks, so I abandoned my post and headed back to town to get some Dunkaroos, but just as I was about to get out of the woods, I got sprayed by a skunk. Uh, I couldn't go to a grocery store sticking like a stinky little skunk butt. My ex-girlfriend, Hamantha, works there, and I was not going to give her the satisfaction of calling me a stinky little skunk butt again. So I went home to change and have a bath, and I, you know, I wanted to set the mood, so... You know, I lit some candles, popped on some relaxing tunes, and added essential oils to the water. But I guess I went overboard with the oils. My tub was so slick I couldn't get out of it. I was stuck in there all week until the mailman broke into my house to use my bathroom for a dump. It was a Christmas miracle. What a relief. Well, that's all well and good, but there's still one dead... (gasps) Cleon? You're alive? Quite right, old chaps. Found myself in a bit of a sticky spot in those woods that night. Thinking quickly, I whittled down a fallen tree into an exact replica of myself, popped my clothes on it, and covered it in a spot of poo-poo doo-doo. Seems to have done the trick. Where have you been? After my successful ruse, I then spent the next week integrating myself into a family of opossums that live in the abandoned dairy corn. Hot treats and cool eats indeed. Eventually, I made my way back to society once I believed it's safe to do so, though I may be addicted to opossum milk now. I'll have to leave some out with the biscuits for Father Christmas. Well, I, for one, am glad to see and smell you again. Yes, yes, we can all smell them. And while it is good to see that death has not visited our humble town again, this town and its citizens have still seen its share of horrors these last few months. There have been violent assaults. People have been living in fear. Somebody needs to answer for this. But, Your Honor, it's Christmas. And wasn't it at Christmas when a certain someone was seeking shelter? Or at least seeking to defend their shelter after their family forgot about them and flew to Paris for the holidays, leaving them alone while two criminals tried to break in and rob the place? And didn't that certain someone learn to forgive and accept his family despite their horrible flaws? And didn't that certain someone find themselves in New York City the following year and pretty much learn the same lessons again, but now with a bigger budget? No, no. I appreciate what you two are trying to do for me, especially after I framed you for a horrible crime and then tried to blow you up along with the rest of the town. But I need to hold myself accountable for my actions. I once wanted to clean up this town, and I know that you can't make a place clean by sweeping things under the rug. Eventually your mom will lift that rug and find all your little pieces of dirt, and then she'll give away your Power Ranger toys to your cousin Eerie Eddie. Your Honor, I'm guilty. Are Are you sure? What those guys were saying was like, really working for me. I was gonna let you walk. I'm sure. In a small way, I can make Corntown a better place. And hey, maybe I'll be able to run for mayor again once I've served my punishment. Sure. That won't be for a while, though. I sentence you to 30 years to be served in Corntown Penitentiary for aggravated assault, attempted murder, animal endangerment, and for not returning a video cassette. Case closed. Oh, uh, oh, uh, okay. Well, a man is only as good as his word. Justin. My dear friend, I will visit you often, and in the times at which I will not be able to visit, I will write a correspondence with all the mundane details of my life. Thank you, my friend. 
Perhaps I could even bake you a confectionery dessert that would serve as a way to sneak you in a tool with which you could escape from your prison cell. <laughs> I wouldn't trust your baking. No, you would be right not to. And also, I was kidding, and I would not break any sort of law again. I'll see you on the other side, Rudy. I will see you on the other side, Justin. Come on, Toby! Hey, Officer Crumble. Great job finding Cleon and Joe. I was doing it to save you guys. I thought if I could prove they were still alive, you couldn't get in trouble for their murder, and one of you wouldn't have to throw the other one under the bus. I heard how you guys were arguing. That's very kind, Bubba, but that was all for show. We had to make Boyd think he was in control. Actually, I was really pretty cheesed about the Taylor Swift stuff. <laughs> still am, actually. Oh my god, just drop it. She's not that great. Not that great? Uh, 11 Grammy Awards, 58 Guinness World Records, 200 million records sold worldwide, best full market launch at the Canadian Fragrance Awards. Oh my god, I'm just not a fan, okay? It always bothered me that she dug her keys into the side of his pretty little suit at four-wheel drive. Are you serious? Yeah, that's a rude thing to do. <laughs> oh my god, Matt, that's Carrie Underwood. You're joking. Uh, I wish I was. <laughs> oh my goodness. This whole time, I thought that was Taylor Swift. And now you're telling me it's Carrie Underwood? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what a whoopsie. Oh, that is such a goof. It's Carrie Underwood. <laughs> She's a cunt. <laughs> such a cunt. Oh my gosh, what a cunt. Oh, big old cunt a <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <sighs> oh, I guess I do like Taylor Swift. A Christmas miracle? Now, kiss and make up. What? I, I don't want to do that. Kiss and make up. Do it. Uh, fine. Uh, whatever. I guess we just... Yeah, just, uh... There. Okay. Guys, you can do better than that. Come on! Kiss and make up like men. Okay. Alright. <laughs> yeah, that's more like it. Woo, yeah, I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need a couple seconds. <laughs> well, I think that's as happy an ending as we're going to get. Oh, hey, I just realized. There's everything going on. I didn't have time to get you a Christmas present. That's okay. Coming back here, solving another mystery, and actually catching the bad guy this time? That's the best gift a guy could ever ask for. I also didn't get you anything. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay? With Justin Doby slash Boyd Nudges now in prison answering for his crimes, Corntown was once again safe. Soon after a date in the courthouse, the town returned to its usual self. The streets were once again filled with friendly faces. Their spirits were once again filled with Christmas cheer. And the air was once again filled with the sound of Christmas carols like Colonel of the Bells, Husk the Herald Angel Sings, and O Corn All Ye Faithful. Another adventure in Corntown had come to an end. The many residents we spoke to and who helped us have returned to their normal lives. Officer Crubble was promoted to Chief of Corntown Police for his brave service though he was later demoted down to sergeant after he was caught Frenching his police sketch that looked like Jake Gyllenhaal. Cleon Thunderbump Jr. opened a Bigfoot-themed charcuterie restaurant in London's West End. We haven't yet worked up the courage to visit. Joe Meef returned to his former post in land surveying and banging Justin Doby's wife. Parker Pazzi was ousted with a vote of no confidence after retweeting extremist right-wing propaganda. I'm a medium and her daughter Yura disappeared after the Tax Enforcement Division of the RCMP discovered their whereabouts. They were last spotted squatting in an abandoned grain elevator in Saskatoon. Muriel published a voluminous account of extraterrestrials in their social structure, which surprisingly was an engaging and thought-provoking read. It was featured as Tom DeLonge's Book of the Month. Dr. Morg revamped the morgue to look like an Irish pub after his tiki theme was accused of cultural appropriation. Howie Hertz retired to Lake Cabo with his girlfriend Mandy Mundy after his camping-themed YouTube channel, Hertz in the Dirts, went viral and made him a very rich man. Daisy Pop-Tarts hit the top of the charts with her EDM metalcore project, Toaster Strudel. Jam Pringles placed third in Huron County's Go Big Bongo Off after bongoing for five days straight. John Stamos currently stars in Big Shot on Disney Plus and voices Iron Man on Spidey and his amazing friends. The kids still love him. As for us, we decided to spend the holidays in Corntown with a good friend.
invite my two friends. Uh, dinner is now being served. A juicy, plump Christmas goose who passed away from various experiments I performed on it at the Mays Institute. Wow. I gotta say, Doc, I'm nervous to eat this, but it smells delicious. Uh, there is nothing to worry about. I have eaten all the animals that I have experimented on. And nothing out of the ordinary has befallen me. Though I do now expel urine that is phosphorescent. Oh, it sounds neat. My piss is boring as shit. We really need to thank you, Doc. We couldn't have solved this case without your help. Or with you getting in the way. Or I'm sure you were important to this. So we wanted to get you something extra special. Our way of saying thank you. Here, open it. Oh, you should not have. I will just pull this ribbon and tear this paper. And now I will open this box. Oh, tissue paper. You really should not have. I have spent hours crinkling this fun time toy. No, look under the tissue paper. There is more? Oh, let me see here. A spoon? Well, a picture of a spoon. We ordered you a whole set on Albania and Amazon, but they didn't arrive in time. But they're really nice spoons. Only 3% lead. I do not know what to say. This... This is the most wonderful gift I've ever received in my life. That's sad. We also found this little guy. Mr. Dog? My dog that Sheila sent to work on a farm in the country. He wasn't cut out for that farm work. He doesn't even know how to drive a tractor. The farmer was glad to get rid of him. Uh, what a truly wonderful life. Uh, and, uh, those two big presents over there, I don't suppose those are, uh... Yes, yes. I too wanted to show you my appreciation for your friendship with commercially purchased goods. Bingo bongo! Oh. My. God. A uh, Hyundai. Uh, well, you like... Okay, well, it's no, it's no Toyota. I would have preferred a Toyota. But I guess, I mean... That's not a Toyota Hyundai. I mean, they're... Is that... They're similar. I mean, it's very nice. Thank you, Dr. Bob's and Freud. <laughs> oh, you will. Well, uh, oh, what a Taylor Swiffer. Oh, I see. I see. It's a, a Swiffer mop, but with a, oh, a picture of Taylor. That's that's actually pretty clever. Thanks. Th thank you, Doctor. Pup. Thanks. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I, I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it's like Taylor, but Swiffer. It's a, you put the words together. <laughs> <laughs> Best Cormus <laughs> ever. <laughs> This has been an SM Experience production. Special thanks to all of our performers Sahara Bailey, Louise Chonky Gravy, Brad Keyes, John Muter, Aaron Neeb, and Bradley Robinson. Executive produced by Stephen T. Holmes, Matthew Miner, and Ima Plastic. Episode mixed by Richard Mixon. If you enjoyed Corntown, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And hey, subscribe to us on YouTube.